In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate the workflow for sending Revit objects into Rhino using the Conveyor plugin. The Conveyor plugin will be used in conjunction with Rhino Inside for a more direct integration between the uh, Revit and Rhino environments. You can see here I have a model that's already been created and authored, and these elements represent objects that have already been imported from Rhino into Revit. And what I've done is I've created a set of wall and door geometries on level 16 um, using native uh, Revit commands. And what I want to do is I want to use the conveyor workflow with Rhino inside to send these objects directly into the Rhino environment. And so the way that you can accomplish that is when you have Rhino inside and conveyor installed, you can go to the add-ins tab and find the Rhino button. Um, this will activate the Rhino inside environment and expose a rhinoceros tab. And what Rhino inside does is it allows you to activate Rhino um, through uh, the Revit interface. So you can have that kind of, um, kind of more direct and integrated modeling experience. And what our plugin does with conveyor is it allows the direct translation of objects from Rhino uh, into Revit. So the, the two technologies uh, work uh, quite well together. So what I've done here is I have a, an, an empty um, Rhino file, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the tower file that this um, uh, Revit geometry originated from. So you can see I have this uh, workshop tower and conveyor. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And uh, when I have this open, you'll see that I have a number of, of different objects here. This is kind of mirroring what we saw in Revit. We have facade geometries and um, different floor geometries being modeled. And what I want to do is uh, to kind of fully demonstrate this process is navigate in Rhino to level uh, 16. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of tab that over to the side just so I have kind of a nice parallel modeling experience. And inside of uh, Rhino, just for coordination's sake, I'm going to go ahead and draw in a clipping plane, which will allow me to kind of slice this building up um, and see um, things at different levels. So you can see I'm going to go ahead and jump into the right uh, modeling screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, clipping plane up to where it is going to match up with level uh, 16 and be a little bit higher. So it's kind of just below level 17 there. And now you'll see that in perspective view we have um, kind of the, the building has been sliced and you know I can move uh, the clipping plane up and down to kind of expose different uh, levels but really what I want is is everything at that level uh, 16 there. So you can see that in, in 3D. It's just hovering right by the level 17 mark. So that means when I bring in this wall geometry, uh, we'll see it appear in, in three dimensions um, inside of the uh, Rhino interface. So in order for me to be able to grab uh, my objects, um, I need to have conveyor active. So inside of the um, Rhino environment, I go ahead and type in conveyor v2. And I'm going to go ahead and activate the, the interface there. And I'm going to kind of dock it off to the side so we have um, that, that experience. And you'll notice that when you have conveyor active, there is an expander um, in this interface that's called Rhino to Revit Direct. And if I expand that, um, this will make a connection into the Revit interface. Again, kind of using Rhino inside as a conduit into the Revit modeling environment. And you can see that there's two commands, uh, get from Revit and send to Revit. So in this particular demonstration, I want to get objects in from Revit. Um, and so when I kind of jump over here into Revit, I can go ahead and say, select this wall object. I now have this wall object selected. And so inside of Rhino, I'm going to click, click on the get from Revit button. And when this happens, um, you'll see that a geometry has been drawn. Uh, what uh, conveyor is doing is it's reaching in to the Revit environment and it is then creating the BREP geometry in Rhino. So I now have a representation of where that wall lives um, from Revit. And I can start to uh, use this type of modeling workflow to um, essentially draw out all the, the rest of my walls as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this uh, kind of temporary core geometry so it'll be kind of replaced with this this plan indicating the kind of building core. So I'm going to go ahead and hide those objects there. And maybe I'll even go into a, kind of a 
a more of a rendered mode um, so we can kind of see softer shadows and see the objects a little bit more clearly. So I can now simply start going through and clicking on other wall objects and what I'm going to do is simply uh, select all instances visible in this view for those walls and I already brought over um, the one wall so I can deselect that and I'm going to go ahead and jump back over into Rhino and say get from Revit and what this is going to do is it's going to draw up um, those remaining wall geometries um, inside of the Rhino environment so I now have um, all of my walls on level 16 uh, represented inside of Rhino. So this is a nice, fast, and easy way uh, to coordinate those geometries that you're developing in your design process. Say um, you sculpt the massing and the kind of conceptual intent of the building in Rhino, uh, you send that geometry over to Revit, you then develop your design using uh, Revit's um, drawing tools um, for building information models, and you then want to coordinate that back with Rhino. Um, this get from Revit command in conveyor makes that all possible. And it's being done using the, the Rhino uh, direct modeling environment. So we're not having to use tools like Grasshopper or, or, or other tools to do this. It's simply uh, select your objects and, and send them into the environment that you, that you need. Um, so hopefully this provides a, kind of an idea of, of how this workflow can be used. There's um, a number of different applications for that and uh, yeah, hopefully this gets you gets you going on on that workflow from for getting your Revit objects into Rhino.